can myself tomorrow chit chat with myself yesterday or myself today? And the answer is, well, we don't know. Like physicists don't know for sure. They can pound their fist on the table, any individual, and say no. But the problem is they don't have a unification theory yet that unifies the theory of um, particles, which is quantum mechanics, with the theory of, of, of space and time. Think of the particles as actors, and they're always in a stage, whether it's outdoors or on a real stage in a sound studio. So they go together, the actors in their environment. So the particles, quantum mechanics, it can never be separated from the stage, space, and time in which they mm -hmm. interact. But the problem is that best theory that we have as humans of, of, of space and time is Einstein's theory of general relativity, which is sort of an advancement on special relativity. And the best theory we have of particles is quantum mechanics. And here's the dirty little secret of physicists. Quantum mechanics very aggressively says that, the, that, that general relativity is incorrect in its foundational assumptions and general relativity retorts back and says very clearly that quantum mechanics is wrong in its assumptions and and so physicists today are scratching their heads because we have some evidence that it, that good evidence that quantum mechanics and general relativity are at least generally correct like mostly correct so string theory and other theories that try to um, fit the two together in a way that they agree um, have so far failed. Like they've never, like string theory is about 55 years old now and it's never made a successful experimental prediction. So the holy grail for physicists is still to find that unified theory of everything. And to just add on another dirty little secret of physics is that we have this thing that we playfully call the measurement problem. And it came about by um, noticing that when we observe particles, they behave differently than when we're not observing them. And it has nothing to do with the light that we might shine upon them to observe them. Um, and it's a real head scratcher for, you know, especially if you're a materialist and you've made up your mind about this or that of what reality is. Um, it, it's a pun or a playful thing to say, call it a problem. Like for maybe somebody with you, your philosophy, if I ask you enough questions, I might say, well, for you, it wouldn't be a problem that your awareness of the particles is going to make an interactive universe be like, ooh, okay, let's, you know, let's change the probabilities because Andre is observed, become aware um, but for a person like maybe how I was 13 years ago, a materialist, that would be a problem. And it's an unsolved problem right now in, in physics. So when we get to these questions of why the heck would consciousness or awareness change how the particles behave? And there are some physicists who say that consciousness or awareness doesn't change it. But there are a lot of other titans of physics, like even like godfathers of physics, who say, no, no, it's a weird, spooky, weird problem. And you can't just hand wave it off. So you get back to that thing. Can Klee tomorrow chit chat with Klee yesterday? Can there be a dialogue, even subtle, even subconscious? There's nothing specifically that prohibits that, that we know of in the context of trying to fit quantum mechanics and general relativity to get and together and partly because we haven't fit that nobody has fit them together successfully mm -hmm. so what i believe is that by by a lot of evidence i've seen in peer review stuff as well as my own personal experience that two consciousnesses separated in time can connect and share consciousness share thought so if that were possible then we have this observation of reality called the complexity arrow of time. Things get more complex, richer over time. Yeah. So let's go back to the story of the Big Bang, right? After the Big Bang, we had this homogeneous uh, mist called the quark-gluon plasma. It was just like quarks and gluons, that's it. 
the spacing between them was typical. It wasn't clumps. It was just misty. And then, um, and then that evolved into something more complicated called the uh, early hydrogen universe. It was just hydrogen. It was really boring. There was no other atoms. But it was more complicated than the quark-gluon plasma because the quarks and gluons self-organized into these more complicated hydrogen atoms. And then um, things started clumping up into stars. And then the stars went supernova. And they produced about 100 other um, atoms, other types of atoms. And then those atoms started teaming up into complicated groups like DNA, molecules. And the story just keeps going to where the complexity uh, of the universe is, is, is like unidirectional. Things get more complex over time on average, not, not less. And so if you take our consciousness the way, the way we kind of recognize that we're smart, because we're smart, like we're doing stupid things, but I think it's clear that we're smart animals. Primates are pretty smart. They have the ability to do abstraction like stories and, and math and stuff. Yeah. So, so I don't think any materialist or any spiritual person, I don't think there's anybody who really believes that humans are the epitome of what's possible in terms of you know, the magnitude of awareness or consciousness that can exist in a universe that keeps getting more complex. So what if there was something forward in time of us in this, in this special relativity view where it does exist up there just at a different location in time, but it's legit, it exists. And we know about this unidirectional complexity arrow of time. So we can say, well, in principle, given enough time, there should be consciousnesses forward in time that are vastly more conscious than us. And does it get to a point where it becomes sufficiently vast and conscious? Maybe it's a collective, okay? But is it possible with the laws of physics as we understand it for a consciousness sufficiently vast to run within its vast consciousness a simulation of itself from very simple origins. And, then, and I think any honest arguer would have to say, oh, sure, there's nothing specifically in the laws of physics as we know them that says no way. And then we can bring in that famous statement, whatever is possible, given enough time will eventually occur. So if it is possible for a vastly advanced collective consciousness to emerge, given enough time, it will have the capability to self-simulate, self-create, self-actualize itself. Mm-hmm.